All right, meteorologist Dean Davison, the weather pros, liveweatherblogs.com. I'm starting off this with my Facebook page, obviously, uh, as you see. Um, one thing I want to talk about is my the podcast I'll be on tomorrow, the 2016 Virginia Storm Teacher Experiences podcast. I'll be going over to Vinton Roanoke, uh, severe thunderstorm that caused a nice, beautiful wall cloud that actually had a tornado warning issued on it not long after it exited the area. And we'll go be going over that tomorrow at 8 p.m. So please join me. Um, like I said, I'll have the link up on the liveweatherblogs.com Facebook page here shortly after I'm done recording. I want to start tonight in the Texas area. Um, the Storm Prediction Center. Marginal risk in, that, uh, in Oklahoma. The slight risk area in Waco, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas areas. And the potential for tornadoes, the 2% tornado profiles on there, the 15% wind, and the 15% hail. So those are up there. We're going to take a look actually at sounding here in a minute um, of the Dallas area. I want to look at that first. I'll show you some radar. And then we're going to move on to what's going to happen over the next few days. Because I think that's important. Especially with this crazy pattern. And we're actually going to go over that too. We're going to go over the pattern. Uh, and what's going to happen in March. Because I showed an image earlier. And a lot of people have been discussing this. And I want to show you what, why I see what I see. So anyway, here is your sounding. It does have supercell, left hand supercell. A uh, severe uh, tornado perimeter of 2.8. Which is relatively good. Um, so we could see some tornadoes form here. In the Dallas Fort Worth area. Most of them will be most likely weak tornadoes, but tornado is a tornado. Anyway, you look at it. We've already had some warnings tonight. So here is our uh, GR3 level radar. I love this radar. This radar is top of the line. Um, if you don't have it in your weather, uh, if you're in Bible weather, it's the best radar you really can get. You can see severe thunderstorm warnings here. This is north and west of Dallas Fort Worth. This whole line is going to move east. So eventually, overnight, it's going to get into Dallas. It's going to get into Fort Worth. It's going to get into Waco. Areas such as that. So we take a look at some of these storms. You get to circles. That's showing some mesocyclonic um, things. And we, take, we can change this uh, base velocity. We don't see nothing really crazy here. That shows rotation. Storm relative velocity, you know. A little green on red, but not nothing that's crazy. Uh, go back to coefficient you can look at these in a better um, issue how much rain's falling you can see a lot of rain we're talking almost two inches three inches um, in parts of Texas uh, we can look at hail all that stuff is available with this so anyway that is Texas currently like I said it's Dallas Fort Worth and if you go to a little bit further south you see we'll get to the Waco in that area um, there's Houston so there's Waco so Waco is, that storms to the west, and they'll be moving in uh, pretty soon, probably in the next two or three hours. So the thing we have here is Cape. We have a good amount of Cape and bulk shear available tonight, and then eventually tomorrow to move a little further to the east into the Louisiana area. So that's something we're looking at also. So that's a lot of good Cape right now, and we'll take a look actually at a sounding, and it's... Sounding looks pretty good. You got a nice southeast to southwest change. A tornado is a threat. Um, in this cape, there is a nice hodiograph. Uh, STP is over two, so that's good um, for tornadoes. Um, basically, in line with an EF1, EF2 size um, on here, and a nice round uh, curvature here. You can see how this goes here. This is in a lot of wind. This is a. Uh, Shows difference wind with height, which allows for that potential. So now we're going to head east with our temperatures. And you can see here, 50s and 60s over the next couple of days is very likely here in the Rona Valley and even some higher 50s near 60 up in the Delaware Valley. You get a little cold at night, cooler at night in the 40s and 30s. And then we get a real warm up here. When it's spiking to the 70s, and you'll see the cold front coming in toward Friday and the Saturday. And this is where we're gonna have to watch here for the potential of severe weather because we're gonna have a nice southeast um, motion coming in towards the low that will be coming in, and that could allow for some severe thunderstorms. 
Um, so we're going to have to watch that closely. And then another front moves in for the Tuesday after that. So we're going to get back into the cold air by the time we get into early March. And then we're going to talk about early March. We're going to talk about what could happen in March here momentarily. But I'm going to go here. Continue. I'll move it in and we'll look at the bulk here. We're going to look at the same thing we looked at with the... But this is a little further out. Same thing we looked at with Texas. We're going to, we're going to pull it together. And here we go into... Let's see. Let's get us on to the Saturday where I was talking about. There we go. And I'm going to pull up. Here we're going to pull up another sounding. And this sounding is going to be for, like I said, the... Uh, there, and it's for severe weather. Um, a south to a west. So it's not extremely strong, but we do have wind with height increase. So that is available. Uh, supercell possible composite. STP is below one right now, but that's still, like I said, a week out. So um, a chance that we have to watch. So here we go with the Death Fest long range. And I'll, I'll tell you the days. We're at Tuesday, Wednesday. Here's that low coming out of the Gulf. It's possible for severe weather continues Wednesday into Thursday. A little light rain around the area. We're getting towards Friday. And you're going to see the moisture coming to the area with the slow to the west. This low looks like it's going to cause some snow uh, in Iowa and Nebraska and up into Minnesota, Wisconsin. Let me get towards Saturday, and that's where well, I was showing you the Friday and the Saturday thing with severe weather potential. With that low cranking around. We'll move it on. Get another low blow up in Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, this will be Tuesday of next week. And this, like I said, that's the second shot of possible severe weather we were talking about. And then we continue on and get the cold air starting to lock a little bit. So this is showing a little bit of a pattern change. And that would allow some potential snow after this time frame because of the cold air coming in behind it. You see how the low is located and the cold air coming in behind it? This is where I think we're going to have to change, right around March 7th, um, where we're going to actually have the cold air in place and storms move along after that. And then we start looking at 8 to 14 days. You know, we're in that warmer than normal, wetter than normal. Week 3 and 4, which is right beyond that. See how we get the colder? Well, look at the precipitation above normal. Colder above normal. There's the situation. There's where we can have the snow occur. Colder above Above normal rain, colder, above normal. That is a good sign if you want some snow. And then, you know, three months, that's a little far out. Let me on that, you know, a little bit above normal and about equal chances. So that being said, let's go in here, look at the MJO, see where it'll be. This is the Madden-Julian oscillation. This is sometimes good for certain things. Where is it going to be? Where do we see the MJO? What phase of the MJO? That's always the question that gets asked because different phases go to different things. And you want to be in a phase eight um, for the phase eight is the best. Um, and it actually gets into phase eight in March. That's where you want it. If you're looking for um, the MJO. So then we go to NAO. Let's see what our NAO is saying. It, let's click on it. And look how it's starting to shrink here after March 1st. Good sign. PNA. Starts to go positive a little bit after this. So let's go in a little closer. Starts to go up. Positive. Negative NAO, positive PNA, always a good sign. AO. Going negative. We'll see how this all works out. Locking would be good with that kind of a trend. So that being said, March is going to be an interesting month. I think we're going to have severe weather. We're going to have a, a snowstorm. I think that's very likely based on the climate prediction also and the prediction of the longer range models currently. So that's what we're looking at right now. And uh, so watch out for the severe weather in Texas if you're living around there. And we also want you to make sure that... Uh, you keep an eye on the forecast over the next week. We could have severe weather in this area in the Roanoke Valley, possible further north with wind coming in uh, for Friday-ish, Saturday-ish. 
and then warmer and warmer weather this week, and then we get to look into the further into the distance. We may actually have some snow in the future, uh, but also some severe weather. So we'll keep that got one for you. We'll talk about it again later. Make sure you also, like I said, tune into um, the Virginia Storm Chaser Experiences tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, I will be a guest of Chris White's, and we will be talking tornadoes and severe weather. So let's wrap it up for tonight. We'll talk to you again soon. Meteorologist Dean Davison, thank you for watching.